everyone. My name is Alisa Ganokcho Dwaragad, or you can call me Bill. First of all, I would like to say thank you for the committee of this conference for this great opportunity. I am studying in master degree of technopreneurship and innovation management at Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. Today, I would like to explain about my study in the topic of Commercial Feasibility Study of Selling Microencapsulation Probiotics to Food Supplement ODM Manufacturing in Thailand. The objective of this study are first to identify selection criteria of probiotics raw material, second to study gap between the technology and market need for further improvement, and third to conduct commercial feasibility study of the technology from Department of Food Technology, Faculty of Science, Chulalongkorn University, Thailand. For the background, according to the Health Mega Trend and Global Pandemic of Coronavirus Disease 2019 or COVID-19, there are the increasing trends in food supplement among consumers. The market size of vitamin and dietary supplements around the world has been constantly increased until it has reached around 115,000 million US dollar in 2020. While the market size in Thailand is around 2,000 million US dollar. If focused in probiotics, one of the supplements with are realized the role of enhancing immunity. Probiotic market size surpassed around 2,000 million US dollar in 2020 and account for 41.7% of all supplement market in Asia Pacific. Because of the market potential in the probiotics product, Thai researcher from Chulalongkorn University has conducted research in the topic of Microencapsulation of probiotics using goat milk and conjac glucomannan hydrolysate via spray dyeing in 2019 to find the alternative solution for probiotic cell protection. The research utilized the microencapsulation technique via spray dyeing process by using conjac glucomannan hydrolysate or KGMH as coating agent together with goat milk, with both of them also perform as prebiotic to promote the growth of Lactobacillus casei, which is the probiotic stain that used it in the research. Let's focus on the process. Start with spray dyeing, which is one of the popular drying techniques in supplement industry because it has a lower cost per unit and shorter time than other techniques such as freeze dyeing. However, according to the hash effect of drying method on sale of probiotics, the microencapsulation technique is essential to protect probiotic cell from heat during the spray dyeing process and also from digestion system of human to maintain amount of probiotics with lead to effective result after consume. In Thailand, there is a wide range of probiotics supplement brands, and most of them are produced by original design manufacturers or ODM, because building own manufacturer require high investment. For your information, I would like to explain more about original design manufacturer or ODM. You might familiar with OEM or Original Equipment Manufacturers. The different point between ODM and OEM is ODM has their own R&D team, so they can help their customer to develop the product. So, this Original Design Manufacturers can potentially serve as a channel for pioneering a new technology in production. 
the qualitative methodology with the semi structure interview method was utilized in this study. As information collection via phone or video conference using Zoom software. Because of the COVID-19 situation in Thailand, we were restricted from meeting the interviewee face-to-face. -face. The original design manufacturers and brand owners were selected to be the representatives of this population. The informants of this study were selected based on the purposive sampling with the criteria that everyone must have at least three years of direct experience in the probiotic market. There were four original design manufacturers and three probiotic supplement brand owners willing to participate in this study. Let's start from original design manufacturer, which are in surprise size. This list of original design manufacturers are ordered based on their experience. All original design manufacturers basically certify GMP, HARSA, and HALAR as basic requirement of food supplement in Thailand. All informants responded that reliability is the key criteria that they look for when choosing a raw material supplier. They mentioned that, that it is uncommon for manufacturers to produce their own probiotic raw materials because of high investment and complexity of registration process. Not only the original design manufacturers, but also the raw material manufacturers in Thailand that are not ready to produce probiotic for food industry yet. So far, the probiotic raw materials are completely imported from outside of Thailand. Another interesting point is about the micro-encapsulation research that use as baseline of this study. The informants suggest that the researchers to focus on the stability efficacy. The minimum amount of probiotics as raw material should be more than 10 to the power of 9 CFU per gram. Moreover, shelf life of the probiotic raw material should be more than 1.5 years for domestic selling and 2 to 5 years for export. Then, let's see the results from brand owners which are in demand side. There are three bands as follow. First, Absolute Wellbeing Group who produce Lispora. There are seven probiotic stains in their product, which are Bifidobacterium sp and Lactobacillus sp. The prominent point of this brand is to reduce the visceral fat and waste circumference. Second, Ultima Life, who produce Balacta and Balacta K for kids. There are two probiotic stains in their product, which are Bifidobacterium lactis and Lactobacillus acidophilus. The key feature of this brand is enhancing immunity. And the last brand is for care, who produce Balancin Bio. There is only Bacillus coagulant, which is the most popular stain that were used in probiotic product in Thailand because it can produce spore which has more stability through production process. Same as finding from original design manufacturers' viewpoints, all informants also mention that the supplier reliability is extremely important. Their suppliers, original design manufacturers, is a key person who support informants to develop their own supplement formula. Another important role of original design manufacturers is to find proper raw material to serve informants' requirement. Readiness in terms of regulation is another factor that plays an important role in this industry. The probiotic stain 
that was approved by FDA Thailand can shorten the process of registration. Another important criteria is supporting documents, especially the report of well-designed human intervention study. This document is used for health claim approval and advertisement. Other than that, the informants in this study also say that function of probiotics are more important than their source. All informants are willing to convert from import raw material to domestic raw materials if Thailand can produce them at a competitive price and conduct a well-designed human intervention study. As conclusion, it is realized that from the result obtained from the informants that the way to commercialize this research is to sell production process technology, not symbiotic, which is finished product, as the raw material for original design manufacturers. The probiotic stain can be changed upon customer and the production condition will be studied to support customer requirement. However, Thailand is not ready to produce probiotic for food industry yet. Therefore, the target customers of the technology ought to be outside of Thailand. As conclusion, market opportunity and technology feasibility should be evaluated. The market opportunity for micro-encapsulation probiotics is evaluated by Pestel and Potter's Five Force model. The results show that the health mega trend and global pandemic of COVID-19 increased demand towards food supplement, especially probiotic supplement. However, the local university in its country also study and deliver research about probiotics to the industry. The finalized market in terms of where to sell the micro-encapsulation technology to must be evaluated again. For the technology facility, KGMH has prebiotic activity to promote the growth of Lactobacillus casei, same as KGH, but has lower viscosity. This material can be used as coating agent to encapsulate probiotic with spray dye process. The spray dye machine is one of basic machine in food supplement industry. When the research can produce via current machine, the technology adaptation is increased refer to larger theory. After evaluated, the research has potential to commercialize. There are many ways to commercialize research from university. First, selling. Second, licensing. Third, joint venture. And fourth, spin off or spin out. The tools name decision metric is utilized by weighting and scoring in four factors. First, return on investment. Second, the right to own and develop technology. Third, capital. And the last one is risk of business. The results show that licensing is the best option to commercialize this research to industry because the research can be developed and a royalty fee can be received yearly as agreed in the contract. Therefore, the production process is what we plan to commercialize. The target customer are overseas supplier. Why proposed type of licensing is exclusive licensing. The sample of license agreement are shown as this slide. The licensor is Chulalongkorn University. The exportation type is exclusive licensing. This kosher fee is 6,400 US dollar, while the royalty fee is 5.67% of sales refer to the rate from reference. The period of contract is three years. The condition for this exclusive licensing is one company in each country. 
for the product which produce from the microencapsulation we are spread on can be sold worldwide except country that license this technology to preserve their competitive advantage. And the last step. Because the microencapsulation technique by spray dye method is relatively common and well known in the food industry, it is necessary to conduct technology protection to protect this intellectual property. Pentipartens are thought to be a good option for protecting non complex technology like microencapsulation and spray dyeing. Moreover, as planned to commercialize to many countries, Patent Corporation Treaty or PCT should be conducted to facilitate the international patent application. That's all from my study. Thank you for your attention. If there are any inquiries, please feel free to ask me.